which means on every single question, every single crucial issue bearing in the Israel-Palestine conflict, the highest judicial body in the world, just like the highest political body in the world, the General Assembly, rejected all of Israel's official positions on how to resolve the conflict. The only issue that the uh, High Court did not rule on was the question of the refugees. And there we have the opinion of the most respected human rights organizations in the world. Both Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International in 2000 and 2001 issued official opinion papers in the refugee question. And both of them said that the Palestinians have the right to return to their homes and those of the succeeding generations who, remain, who retained genuine links to the land also had the right to return. That, therefore, is the considered opinion of the main political, legal, and human rights organizations in the world. A two-state settlement on the June 67 border, a full Israeli withdrawal, and a just resolution of the refugee question based on the right of return and compensation. Then along comes the Arab League. In March 2002, all 22 members of the Arab League came out in favor of the two-state settlement on the June 67 border and a just resolution of the refugee question. In fact, the Arab League one, went one step further. It said if Israel agrees to these universally recognized principles for resolving the conflict, we're willing to have normal relations with Israel, trade, tourism, and so forth. The Palestinian Authority has embraced these terms, and now something awful happens. So does Hamas. It comes out in favor of the two-state settlement. Khalid Marshall, among others, I'll quote him because he's the senior official right now. Khalid Marshall says in March 2008, and now I'm quoting him, this is the head of Hamas. There is an opportunity to deal with this conflict in a manner different than Israel and behind it, the US is dealing with it today. There is an opportunity to achieve a Palestinian national consensus on a political program based on the 1967 borders. And this is an exceptional circumstance in which most Palestinian forces, including Hamas, accept a state on the 1967 borders. There is also an Arab consensus on this demand. And this is a historic situation. But, but no one is taking advantage of this opportunity. No one is moving to cooperate with this opportunity. Even this minimum that has been accepted by the Palestinians and the Arabs has been rejected by Israel and the United States. Israel's own former head of the Mossad, he recently wrote in the, in the Israel's most, it's now circulation newspaper, he said, the Hamas leadership has recognized that its ideological goal is not attainable and will not be in the foreseeable future. Hamas is ready and willing to see the establishment of a Palestinian state in the temporary borders of 1967. They know that the moment a Palestinian state is established with their cooperation, they will be obligated to change the rules of the game. They will have to adopt the path that could lead them far from their original ideological goals. So here was the first big problem to Israel. Hamas was being moderate. Hamas 
was being reasonable. Hamas had embraced the international consensus for resolving the conflict. Hamas was going along with the UN General Assembly. Hamas was accepting the opinion of the International Court of Justice. Hamas had embraced the proposal of the 22 members of the Arab League. Well, we have a catastrophe in the making. And now the catastrophe gets even worse. Because in June 2008, Hamas negotiates indirectly a ceasefire with Israel. And lo and behold, Hamas keeps to the ceasefire. How do we know? All we have to do is to turn to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs website of the State of Israel. They have a publication entitled, The Six Months of the Low Arrangement. What does the publication say? Hamas was, and now I'm quoting them from their own website, the Israeli website, Hamas was careful to maintain the ceasefire. They were careful to maintain it despite the fact that Israel reneged on the crucial quid pro quo of that ceasefire. The quid pro quo that if Hamas abides by the ceasefire, Israel would ease its brutal blockade of Gaza. Israel didn't ease the blockade, but Hamas, it was careful to maintain the ceasefire. 